I'm your host, Aaron Heath, and I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 82 of the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. You can find the show notes by going to gunrightsintexas.com slash 082. Well, folks, I'm going to do a show. It's going to be down on. It's going to be done down on the quick. Okay, I mean this show is. Well, I haven't had time to plan it. I've been fighting to get my notebook resurrected, and I have failed. That means I have no email feedback. Email from just before the last show is MIA, and I don't know how to tell anybody that's emailed me this, but I may not get back to you on it. I'm sorry if I don't. I have been going through a bunch of email got ate by the spam filter. As a result, I was going through, I was recovering email that was misflagged as spam. And that's kind of my fault. I went in and I changed a setting in my spam filter, made it far more aggressive and a little too aggressive. Well, it didn't help matters when this morning I dropped my notebook. Apparently, uh, the spinny thingy called a hard drive in my notebook does not like being dropped from about five feet or it might not have liked uh, the bounce it took after it hit and then hit again and then had a small hit again needless to say it could be in better shape but it's not well that particular hard drive contained the carry tips it contained all the feedback it contained show notes i can probably recover some of it maybe even all of it i don't know yet we'll see however for now i do not have any content to share with you in regards to uh, for this episode. Well, let's just put it that way. I have no content for this episode. As a result, I want to move back to doing a lot of my work on online with Google Docs. But enough of that. Let me run the audio clip that tells you how to get the show, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to another subject. Or not subject. We'll move on to another issue I need to address. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast is available on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Myro Player, YouTube, the website, and of course, in your favorite app using the RSS feed on the website. With all those options, there is no excuse for not subscribing. Links to all these can be found on every page of the website. Okay, you now know how to get the show. Well, I recently had an encounter with an open carry activist. This gentleman came into where I work. He was open carrying. He kept his hand on his pistol. And I asked him, sir, can you please not touch your weapon? You're making people a little nervous. And his response to me was, it was none of my business how he carried his weapon and that he was essentially defending my right to keep him bare arms by doing so. Now, this gentleman, he claims he's a member of an of the largest open carry group in the United States. I don't know which group that would be. I think they all claim they're the largest. He also made a comment that uh, all of these businesses in this area need to learn from need to learn from each other and leave him the and I'm not going to repeat what he said alone. Well, I have a problem with this. When you're open carrying, please do not touch your weapon. I may be in Seminole, Texas at work, but if it happens in Seminole where I can count the number of encounters I've had with people that open carry besides myself on one hand, and I could lose a finger or two and still be able to count them on one hand. These issues are happening elsewhere, too. And as I have been told, one of my spies in the open carry Texas groups has sent me an email saying that, well, it was actually a copy and paste from a post by a member in one of the OCT groups that apparently happened in a town north of where I'm at. They admitted the town, but they said it was north of my town. North of my town could be, let's see, considering Seminole, it could be in Seagraves, which I doubt I would have heard about it. It could have been in Brownfield. It could have been in Denver City. It could have been in Loop. It could have, it could go way up there. It could go as far north as Lubbock and still be considered north of my town or Amarillo. But anyways, though, this is a very similar situation, but apparently this instance was because the open carrier had a homemade holster. Let's put it that way. And I'm going to make a suggestion. If you're going to open carry, open carry in a quality holster. It'll keep your gun safe and secure. It'll keep it from getting damaged. 
and things like this really make a difference. Now, I wish I had my email where I could actually look at the email and tell you more about that encounter, but that was on the computer that was dropped. So I don't have all those details. I am, well, I do have another notebook that is now pulling up all that. And I'm even th debating putting that on my Nexus tablet or my iPod or my iPad where I can download all that email onto those devices. Actually, that'd probably make my workflow on the podcast easier if I could just look that up on there. I mean, I may actually do that. However, I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to find the show on social media. Then we'll come back and I'll touch on a very, very brief topic. I'll give you an update on what I'm doing in my personal life. Why? Because I got to have something for the show. And then, well, we'll go, we'll do another audio clip and then we'll do the news and then we'll wrap the show up. This is going to be a very short show, or at least I hope it is. I hope I don't ramble too much. Speaking of rambling, I need to shut up. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast has a social media presence. You can like it on Facebook. You can follow it on Twitter. You can circle it on Google+, and you can follow it on Instagram. With all those options, let's get social. Well, at one point, a few episodes back, I don't have my notebook in front of me, so I can't look at the episode list and tell you what episode discussed what. But a few episodes back, I had a gentleman interviewed where he kind of gave us an example of how to do things. Since then, several people have done similar efforts and they've been met with success. So let's talk about what I'm let's talk about what I'm trying to get to here. And that's getting the right to carry in businesses that have posted 30.6 and 30.7. Over on the Texas CHO forum, you've seen a few. I've had a few emails which of course I can't read, but people have actually come in and said, "Hey, I sent a letter. I got a 30 out 6 sign taken down. Now, on the Texas CHL form, there's been some people that got a little unhappy with people for mentioning, hey, you don't have to take the 30 out 7 down, just take the 30 out 6. And these folks, they're, it's understandable. I mean, they feel that open care is being thrown under the bus, but it's not. The thing is, a lot of businesses want to ban open carry. And they've been given misinformation that in order to ban open carry, they have to ban concealed carry. One business I have spoken to was given this impression by an open carry act advocate. Well, if you're going to ban open carry, you've got to ban concealed carry too, just to be fair. And when he asked about just to be fair, well, the law requires you to be fair. So if you're going to be fair, you've got to ban open carry too. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, the guy was thinking, well, this guy kind of knows the law, so... I'm going to ban open carry and conceal carry, or I want to ban conceal carry because that's what the law requires. Well, that wasn't the case. The guy at this business, before he posted his signs, he actually emailed me and said, Hey, I listen to your podcast, but it gets lost among all the other podcasts I listen to. And I was wondering, do I have to ban conceal carry if I ban open carry? I sent him an email back. No, you don't. You don't have to ban open carry and concealed carry. You don't have to ban one or the other. But if you ban open carry, keep in mind, you will lose customers if you ban concealed carry. You might lose a few if you ban open. But if you ban both, you're going to make a lot of people decide they're not going to shop with you because your business is not safe. Well, sign makers are telling them they got to post both signs to ban open carry. You're seeing uh, gun control advocates telling them you got to post both signs to ban open carry and it only goes downhill from there so when you approach a business and you're trying to get them to take down a 30-06 let them know they're going to lose your business if they don't take down the 30-06 sign let them know that you will still shop with them if you will if not then tell them you won't but let them know that you would prefer it if the 30-07 came down too but if you're going to if you're going to take the effort and you're going to try and get a sign removed, let the business know that the 30-06 has to come down to keep your business. Then give them some time to see nothing's happened, nothing bad has happened at all. Let them get acclimated to the idea and then maybe contact them. Tell them, look, I understand you have this dress code about open carry. You don't want it in your store. And 
while this offends me, I, I accept that decision. I still do business with you. But it'd be really nice if you'd take this 30-7 sign down too. Because your competitor over here doesn't have it. And when I'm open carrying, I go to them because I don't have to find a, I don't have to cover up or leave my gun in my vehicle. It's just more convenient for me to go to your competitor. But give them some time to adjust to the whole idea that license carry hasn't hurt them yet, and then move on. There's a lot of businesses that simply do not understand the law as far as how do you go about banning open carry. And anti-gun forces are taking advantage of it. Some pro-gun advocates are taking advantage of it to try and force an issue that really shouldn't be forced. But let's try to get the 30-06 signs down. Once we have them down, then let's work on getting the 30-07s removed. Once we have the 30-07s taken down, everybody can be happy. But there's another problem. I am still looking into it. There is a... Oh, man. There are state agencies that have rules in place that are requiring businesses to take anti-gun action in order to maintain the license issued by these state agencies. Now, that's another episode that's going to come down later when I get all my research. I am slowly going through looking for agencies that require a prohibition on carry. However, as I do this research, we have to figure out which agencies are doing this, and then we have to go to the legislature, and we have to get a f solution. We have to expand preemption to cover state agencies. And when we do this, we need to expand preemption so that, well, it needs to be expanded so that any agency or political subdivision of the state may not post a sign unless it's an off-limits location under the law. They may not require a private entity to post a sign unless that private entity is a statutorily off-limits location. In addition, we need to create a penalty for state agencies that violate this provision. We need to create a penalty for anyone who authorizes a regulation or votes for such a regulation or uh, any kind of restriction. If you vote for a restriction and it goes into effect, then you should be held liable for that, act, for that action. And we need to incorporate that into the law. We need to incorporate a provision where if someone enforces a provision that is counter to the law, that they are held liable. And we need to create a private cause of action. Or the private cause of action, if it's a sign that's posted on a government building, then the private citizen should be able to sue that particular agency or political subdivision. Or if it can be shown that this provision was in effect after, or this prohibition was in effect after the provision was passed, they should be able to additionally hold whoever enforced it or, or if it wasn't enforced if whoever uh, voted to pass it accountable. Now, let's say somebody, let's say you have a sign on a courthouse that says this location's off limits, and it needs to be expanded to any signage, not just 30-06, 30-07. But let's say you have somebody going into the courthouse, and the sheriff says, well, you can't do that. Uh, you're open carrying. You're going into the courthouse. We don't allow that. We have a commissioner's court ruling or we have a city ordinance that prohibits it here well that particular sheriff or deputy could be held individually liable because they should have been trained by their uh by their department and somebody might say well that's not going to be very law enforcement friendly so let's do this let's show that if the officer can show or the uh the law enforcement officer or whoever's enforcing the provision can show that they were not properly trained, then their supervisor, who should be aware of it, becomes liable. But there has to be some kind of accountability at a personal level. But I'm, I'm rambling. I've gone way off topic. In the end, we need to let businesses know that you don't have to post both signs. If you want to ban open carry, ban open carry. If you want to ban concealed carry, ban concealed carry. But if you ban both, you're not getting my money. If you're just trying to ban open carry, and you think you got to ban both, well, here's the truth. Maybe you don't want a maybe you don't want people to carry concealed weapons in your store because you listen to Poncho and Lefty too much, like a lot of open carry advocates have. 
and you believe anybody that carries a concealed handgun is dishonest. So you ban concealed carry, but you allow open carry. Well, guess what? You can do that. As long as I'm able to carry in your business in some form, we'll be okay. And I'm really getting tired of having to deal with people who feel if concealed carry or feel that concealed carry should be banned anywhere open carry is banned. I get these comments from open carry advocates. I get them from uh, gun control advocates. Heck, I get these comments from people who think that they know more about gun laws than I do. And these are people that have never had a class on firearms of any kind, but they heard it on the news. Overall, we have to get these signs taken down, and it's a multi-phase process. So let's work on getting these signs taken down. And when the signs are down, then we can fight over what was the best method. As it is, we can use the shotgun method right now. I'll contact them and tell them, hey, you can leave 30 7 up, but take the 30 6 down or you're going to lose my business. You can tell them, take both signs down or you're going to lose my business. Or you can tell them, take the 30 7 down or you're going to lose my business. But however you do it, do it in a polite, friendly, and more importantly, do it in a neighborly manner. Remember, we're not here to dictate to these businesses how they should run themselves. We're here because we are gun rights advocates. If they don't want our money, we don't give them our money. We can ask them to take their signs down. We can show them that taking their signs down will benefit them. But we got to do it in a way that makes them friendly to us. Even if they don't agree with us, we don't want to make an enemy out of them. Because if we make an enemy out of them, in the next legislative session, the gun control advocates have a new ally. And that is something we do not want. Okay, give you an update on what's going on in my personal life. <clears throat> I've been super busy working on the Jeep. I have lots of little ends of wire covered in solder. I have lots of little pieces of solder on my desk. I have spools of wire. You'd think I was making a wiring harness, except that I have been. I actually built a small wiring harness to wire in additional lights into my Jeep. And I was getting ready to build a relay box fuse panel and essentially a switch panel so that I could distribute power in my Jeep without having to hack into the factory wiring. And then I found a solution that made things so much nicer. It came with a bracket designed to fit my application. I didn't have to punch a hole in the firewall, which was nice. Heck, I didn't even have to I didn't even have to change the change out anything in the electrical system. It bolted up under the hood. I drilled a one-inch hole in the firewall, put a rubber grommet in, ran a cable through. Actually, I ran the cable through, then put the grommet in because it, the, the cable end wouldn't have fit through the hole. But then, after I got it routed through, I put the switch panel up, and overall, it's a nice system. I wired in the new off-road lights, and now I have an interesting, albeit a different problem. You see, I'm waiting on a package. I don't like waiting. One package has already been delivered and it allows me to mount what's coming in in the second package. And the second package is a worn winch. I'm trying to get my Jeep where when I take it out hunting or if I decide to do an off-roading event, I'm prepared. And part of this will be adding in a Citizens Band radio. For those of you who don't know what Citizens Band radio means, it's a CB radio like you see in all the trucking uh, shows and movies from the 80s or the Dukes of Hazard, I know a lot of a lot of off-roaders prefer, or even a lot of off-road events require that you have a CB radio. I just think that it's a good thing to have if you're going off-road because it may be the only thing that you can use to get help. I've been in places where you don't get a cell phone signal. In fact, I go to a lot of places you don't get a cell phone signal. But that's where I'm at with my personal life. I want to do a quick audio clip and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do the news segment. I'll give you an update on the news segment in just a moment when I start it and then we'll wrap the show up. If you want to contact the podcast, please send email to Aaron at gunrightsintexas.com or you can leave a comment on the webpage, which is gunrightsintexas.com. However, if you want to leave a voicemail and be featured on the show, then please do so by dialing 409-292-6736. And 
we're back for the news segment. Well, our news girl's on vacation. Since she's on vacation, I'm not going to come up with a new name for her. And because she's on vacation and I kind of killed the hard drive, I have three stories that I kind of just did a very quick Google search for. And they'll be added to our show notes. In fact, they'll probably con- the show notes will probably consist of this. Our first one, we're going to put it in the In Defense of Self and Others. In Panola County, Texas, a state trooper was involved in a shooting that left one man dead. As a result of the officer-involved shooting, Texas Rangers are investigating and will forward their findings to the district attorney's office. In the politics category, we have two stories. The first one, well, the headline, University of Texas to allow students to carry handguns, is so full of errors it's not even funny. In fact, it makes you question the accuracy of the content that the art of the article the headline is for. Now, the Texas legislature passed legislation in the previous session, which would be the 2015 session, that permitted students with the carry license to be armed on campus while permitting colleges to restrict carry in a very few limited cases. The University of Texas has no choice but to allow the carry of handguns. Now, they're going to, the reports are that they're going to ban carry in the dorms. And if I'm not mistaken, the uh, attorney general has an opinion that said, no, you really can't do that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I think that was the case. But anyway, you go about it, that is not exactly within the intent of the law. Then we have a story where, well, this one makes me sad. Unless you live under a rock, you already are aware that Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia passed away at the age of 79 at a ranch near Marfa, Texas. Now, his death could very easily have a very dramatic impact on the nation and all the rights citizens of this great nation enjoy. Any decision that had a 5-4 decision could now go the other way. Now, some people might say, well, that's okay with me. Is it? Consider that Scalia was one of the five in Heller or, and in McDonald. During the, election, uh, during the election for president the last two times, Tom Gresham, host of the Gun Talk radio show, which is also uh, a three-part podcast, or uh, it's like an hour and a half if you do the podcast, because it doesn't have the station commercials. However, he more than once explained with a 5-4 decision, we're just a heartbeat away from that decision being overturned. And I knew what he was saying. And when I first heard about Scalia passing away, my first thought was Tom Gresham very clearly in my head with just a heartbeat away. I never argued that. I never thought he was wrong. But I had hoped that he would not be proven right. And right now, it's up to the Senate to delay any confirmations that Obama throws up. Because you can guarantee anybody that Obama's, Obama appoints will be a very, very bad choice for gun rights. In addition to that, keep in mind, we not only do we have to hold the Senate uh, accountable in keeping an appointment from happening, we have to make sure the next president is somebody that can appoint someone that will be more in tune with our gun rights, with our individual rights. Scalia was an originalist in the constitutional law arena. <sighs> Man, try not to get too angry here as I go down different thought courses to try and figure out the best way to put this, but we have to fight in the primaries. We have to fight in the general election to ensure that the next president of the United States does not appoint Supreme Court Justice Barack Hussein Obama. We have to go through and we have to fight to make sure that the next Supreme Court Justice is every bit as conservative as we can possibly find. We have to make sure that the next Supreme Court Justice is somebody that Scalia would have been proud to sit on that bench and carry on his legacy. Now, with that said, keep the, keep the Supreme Court seat open in your mind when you go to vote. Speaking of voting, polling locations are off limits per Texas law. You must not carry when you go to vote. However, when you show up, lock it in your car. Go vote, get it out, and go on your way armed. And when you vote, make sure that you vote for someone who will appoint a Supreme Court justice that will do right by this country by the late Antonio, Antonin Scalia, and make sure somebody that will do right by the Constitution of the United States. With that said, please 
Stay safe and carry responsibly. Thank you for listening to the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes or send feedback to the host. Your input will be used to improve the show. Stay safe and please carry responsibly.